We're live here, uh, Radley Griffin with Griffin Concierge Medical and Mahila Telecon with HealingWithFoods.org. And here uh, on our weekly low carb chats and I uh, hope everyone had a wonderful uh, low carb, high fat Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, we're gonna continue our, our discussion from last week of navigation of the holidays. And today we're really gonna talk about how do we navigate a big problem that a lot of people have when they're starting out on the low carb, high fat diet, and that's dealing with cravings. But first, Mahila, how are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank you for asking. I didn't even realize this is our first uh, live chat after Thanksgiving weekend. Oh, we, it, I'm going to silence my phone here. Sorry. Time is flying. I know. You're having fun, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's still flying. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, this is great. So uh, part of our title today was uh, we want to, and then I'm very curious in this from a, a dietitian perspective uh, for the, the, for help with my patients and even myself with how do we cure our food cravings forever? And I think for us to really get down to uh, the bottom of, of how do we do that, we need to know really what causes cravings to begin with. And can you speak a little bit about what what drives craving and, and, and maybe differentiate between craving and hunger uh fire away let let me know all you know let us know all all about this concept uh i think cravings are kind of i don't know if they have a loose definition everybody gives uh, their own interpretation to cravings mm -hmm. but uh there's nevertheless a, a complex issue Sure. That has so many triggers from emotional triggers to biological, like micronutrients deficiencies, like certain vitamins or minerals or, or lack of, of true nourishment to the cell, mm -hmm. inability to generate energy at the cellular level, so, um, but, but I think the biggest trigger for cravings, nevertheless, is food uh, exposure, so-called food, those foods that, and we can talk about like, like when we crave what we crave, right? Most of us crave something that's considered forbidden, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so it's, it's this over, like it's always in our face, something that we shouldn't be eating. Uh, and plus is the emotional. That's why I like how you said, is there a distinction between craving and hunger? Because um, when we go and we eat something, whether it's forbidden or it's just food, right. are we really eating because we are hungry or is an emotion that triggers the act of eating? Right. Uh, and I'm, I'm by no means... Um, train in mindful eating or in uh, psychology of eating and any of that because I know they are coaches that, that focus on that aspect of food. Um, just from, from a dietitian's perspective, from a woman, which most women deal with some kind of emotional eating, men too, but women are more open about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you that um, my relationship with food was... Um, <laughs> not that healthy growing up. And um, I can say that now since I embraced fat again in, in my diet and a more you know ba balanced meal in the sense that it has animal foods as well as plant foods, mm -hmm. uh, I'm more in um, peace with with food. I, I don't have the cravings I used to have. I don't have the the hunger. Um, and, and if there are emotions that I need to deal with, I don't go to food to, to, to deal with the emotion. It's almost right. like I'm, I'm like saturated nutritionally and energetically that I, I can't go and eat if I'm sad or happy or, or, or overeat because usually the problem is when we overeat something, even right. if you eat a bite of cookie it's a difference between a bite and a bag right, right. so so that's kind of, i don't know this was kind of a long 
answer. I don't know if I made well, no, sense. I, I think it's true. And I think the other side of that with that emotional side, you know, my, my challenge has not necessarily been, I think we all deal with cravings and, um, it, you know, the other side to the emotional side is, is uh, instead of being mindful, uh, a mindful eater, which I think, I think I am now. And I, I try to preach to, to my, my population and, and, uh, is in the past I was mindless. I, I didn't give food a thought. I just, yes. I was thin and I just felt, Hey, I'm thin and I can kind of really do whatever I want. And, and so many who are in my category who are, who are thin, but are on the inside metabolic wrecks, which I did discover, um, the, we, we don't have necessarily the emotional attachment per se, but we do need to become present in the, uh, you know, in, in what we are consuming. And, and I think, uh, that's, that's just a, another take, um, on, on the different emotions that, or lack of emotion rather, uh, that, that people have, I think, uh, and you said it's something actually yes. so true because for us that are thin or lean all through our lives and, you know, people think, ah, oh, you're lean, what do you know? You can eat whatever you want, how much you want. It doesn't affect you. But this it really does, it doesn't really affect us. It does. It yeah. may not show on the outside immediately. Eventually, it, it would catch up with, with all of us, if not on the looks, on, on the inside, on the health. And that, that right. I'm the prime example of that with yeah. uh, gestational diabetes, despite the fact that I didn't have weight issues, right. but that had to do with my non mindful eating where I would just eat a pint of ice cream because the next day I would ride 50 miles bike ride. And in my mind, I said, Oh, I would burn the calories. Who cares? I didn't think about the quality of the food, nor about the amount of right. sugar that my pancreas had to deal with. Right. Right. So, I yeah. Think- I, one of the things that we, you know, obviously with with being low carb, uh, I, I, this metabolic correction we talk about, this reset, if you will, uh, we really become uh, more in tune with what our body is telling us. And I think it's one of those things where we need to delineate between, well, what are our cravings telling us sometimes? Because if we're craving ice cream, I think that's one thing, especially with the knowledge we have with the inflammatory aspects of of sugar and what that's doing for us. But what, what is our body telling us when we crave that hamburger or that steak or um, some of these other, other food products, you mentioned the micronutrients. Um, it's, it's, I think what I want to help people with, how do we delineate between what's a healthy craving and what we would consider an unhealthy craving? Or is that just common sense? Uh, well, maybe not. I guess. It, to some degree, it's common sense. Uh, I always ask people to ask themselves before they eat, why? Why do you want to eat right now? Are you truly hungry? Uh, and if you think you're truly hungry, maybe look at the time and see when did you have your last meal? Mm-hmm. If it's only an hour and a half ago, Maybe we question, depending on what you had before, right? If you really, truly are hungry. If it's a reasonable time to be hungry and you maybe you expend lots of physical energy and yes, you are hungry. So so the, the first thing is always go to the why. The why yeah. goes into everything. Why am I eating? Why this food? Um, and um, if you have a good a- explanation to why you eat and then uh, see again, slow down and see how much you eat. And would you crave salt? Like um, going back to when you crave something salty versus something sweet. Um, we know that if, if they are adrenal glands, they love salt. Uh, when you go low carb, because you lose more sodium in, in the urine, you may naturally crave more salt. So it's, it's your body may give you a signal that you need more sodium in your diet, right? right. So it's it's normal. Uh, but again, is it a craving that you you just want to overeat that food, or again, it's hunger? Yeah, yeah. That's where we have to make the distinction. Could you? Um, can we make the assumption that if we're craving? 
uh, let's say something, say sweet, for instance, can we make the assumption that our our blood sugar is, is falling uh, to a level that may make us uncomfortable? Maybe we're not maybe we're not converting to fat burning as efficiently. Is that more of an insulin or, or uh, an insulin trigger, do you think, uh, if we're craving something sweet or can it, is it that simple? Well, I don't think it's that simple, but I don't, I, at the same time, I don't, in my case, yeah. because I test my sugar, whenever I feel like I ate a meal and um, I find myself thinking that I need something else, whether it's sweet or fat, I, I go and I test, test my sugar. Okay. And it's usually not 90 something or somewhere in there, especially if it's after eating, like 120, 90, somewhere in that range. And um, so, so based on my personal experience, it's not sugar related, not at all. Okay. More often, if we crave something sweet, maybe again we we had maybe too much protein in the diet, or maybe not enough fat. In fact, it's it's quite common that if you don't have enough fat in your meal, you will find yourself more often um, looking for for something else. Like if you don't have that feeling of satisfaction mm -hmm. with the right. meal you just ate. Okay. So, so I think it's the balance between uh, the the fat and the protein that comes, and of course how much sodium we we take in with our foods. And I even add salt to my coffee, as strange as it may sound. Especially if I know I go and I work out, mm -hmm. uh, I add salt to my coffee and I'm, I'm by now I'm used with the taste in the beginning it felt a little strange to have salt a little How much salt. Do you I take the shaker two three I do two three okay. spins or if I sometimes I use the salted uh, Kerrygold butter oh, got it. Okay. a tablespoon so whatever comes with that okay it doesn't overpower the taste but if if you drink coffee with no salt and you you would taste my coffee you would tell the difference but so so it's um it's not an easy answer. It's yeah. always being your own detective. That's what I invite people, always question. And of course, we live such a high-paced life that often, mindlessly, we go, we eat the thing, and then we realize, oh, no, again, I ate this yeah. or I ate too much. And so it really requires like inner work and, and a commitment to just pay more attention to how you feel, how the food you eat makes you feel journal everything, the time you ate, what you ate, when did you get hungry, what did you crave for, what were the emotions around it, you know, maybe what's stress related to, to your work or to your spouse or sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. So, so big. I, I notice this whenever my clients or I, 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 I hear, oh, I didn't sleep good last night. And I ask, how is your food, you know, the day after a lack of sleep I create? And I, I, that I, I witness myself. I find myself man, wanting to munch. I have like, yeah. a, it's like a weird feeling where yeah. you are unsettled. Yeah, absolutely. You, you're familiar with that? Very familiar with that. And different things trigger, trigger mine particularly. So yeah, I think that's a good segue to tips to eliminate and fight these things that, that happen. My, my cravings, if I can share my story, my cravings typically have, I don't generally crave sweet. Um, no. one, one of the people I really, uh, really changed my, my medical practice, I attribute that to Gary, Gary Taubes, and he wrote Why We Get Fat, Good Calories, Bad Calories. His most recent is The Case Against Sugar, and he had an editorial, either it was in the New York Times or it was in the, uh, or an opinion piece, rather, in the um, uh, New Yorker. And he had a he had an interesting comment on on you know the two schools of thought where it's do you do you take a little bite of the dessert at dinner, uh, or do you just avoid it completely? And his strategy is to just avoid it completely because it's never truly satisfying. And I've I've really adopted that that same philosophy uh, from a sweet perspective. But I, so I don't really crave sweet per se, uh, like I used to, of course. My, but I do get triggered by intense hunger at times and where I am just in the kitchen, I'm just standing in front of the refrigerator <laughs> eating and I'm, I'm 
looking at all my high fat options uh, and it's, it's somewhat, sometimes it's, it's really difficult for me to get enough food in my belly. And some of the things I've been doing recently, uh, which, uh, which have, have really worked is because I, I like to work out at night and often I will, I will eat after my workout. So I don't want to eat a whole lot prior to a workout. And one of the things I've done more recently that has just absolutely killed, <laughs> killed my craving or my hunger is, is the use of exogenous ketones. It's a ketone wow. powder. And I don't know if it's because I don't really care for the taste, but I, I drank a glass full of the chocolate flavored ketones and my appetite is completely decimated. I have no appetite whatsoever. So that's a more recent thing for me. But, it, but before I was doing that, it was definitely fat loading and the fat was always a way to really satisfy uh, that, that, that hunger craving that I had. And if I do get a sugar craving, I, I do know that I have a, um, I, I do a bedtime protein smoothie that's low sugar, has stevia in it as a sweetener, uh, provides a little bit of that sweet flavor. Um, and it's, it's very filling from a protein perspective. I put natural peanut butter in it and I may, may or may not put uh, egg protein in that as well. Uh, but that's, those are my general hints because a lot of these, these uh, cravings occur at night. And I, I, I do think the, for me, the uh, utilization of the of fat loading, um, the sweetness from, you know, either a dark chocolate mm -hmm. or a, uh, with peanut butter, I always like to combine my sweet with a fat. And I, that's, that's the way uh, I navigate those, those cravings. Uh, how about you? Well, I, I have to say that I'm, I'm free of cravings for a long time, but I did, I do remember being out of control with sweets, which yeah. most people, uh, although if I would start a bag of chips, I would probably want to finish the bag of okay, chips sure. as well. But those things that are slippery usually, there's usually high carb, high fat, yeah. I saw combined together. Those are yeah. the foods that you, you know, you have a bite and it's, it's uh, too, too, ma too many and too many is not enough. That's right. That, that's one that this thing stayed with me. This quote, I heard it when I did my weight loss certification back in, I don't even know. I was a dietitian at Jackson Memorial Hospital. And uh, one of the speakers gave this quote and I just like, wow, I said, that makes so much sense. Because you you know you take a bite and it becomes too many because yeah. you can't stop. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I agree with with um, with with your approach and Gary Todd's where it says, it's especially if you know it triggers you. Until you you know you go over the hump and you're just free of those cravings and it may take years for that yeah, to happen. Sure. It's better not to have that one bite, to be radical, 100% in. I do not touch sugar or anything that tastes sweet for that matter, even if it's artificial sweetener, because as long as we continue to expose our taste buds to some sort of sweet, we are going to crave for it. Mm -hmm. It just triggers. So by just removing it, for a period of time and that period of time it depends from case to case from person to person right that's when the taste buds clean up and the threshold for sweet just drops so then you eat cashews and i probably said this before and they taste sweet it's like yeah. wow this raw cashews not the salted one in the salted ones you can't really taste the how sweet cashew is and right. then if you look at the carb content it's quite high cashews are quite high in That's carbohydrates cool. so so number one tip or strategy if anybody's open to this and if they are the kind of person that they once they have one bite, they can stop. It's don't have that one bite and don't have it in the house. Clean up your fridge and your pantry. Um, if the family wants it, maybe they have their own area where you never go in. So you don't get triggered because every time you open the refrigerator or the pantry, if it's right in front of your eyes, it's so hard to say no. Yeah, it's that's like how long so, can you use willpower? Yeah, Not very so long. Important. And the minute you're stressed, or upset or happy or whatever you are, you gotta yeah. go for it because it's there. Oh, I know. 
It's so important. I can't stress this enough for those out there that are doing this. The the sooner you can convince your your spouse, your significant oh other, God. your roommate to join in, the the more successful you're going to be. Yeah. The last thing we want to do is we don't want to self sabotage, of course, uh, and we definitely don't want to self sabotage or sabotage a loved one. Um, and I think for a future discussion, we're going to talk about uh, what are we. I think this is everybody's struggle. What do we do for our kids and how do we, yes, how do we minimize the exposure to our kids? I mean, of course we have to bribe them, right? And we have to, uh, <laughs> I say that. Um, and so that's gonna, that's gonna be a really neat topic for, for yes. next time is talking about, okay, it's great that the Especially parents now are doing- around the holidays when it's more exposure. Um, absolutely. And, you know, throwing out the, you know, kids will be kids. You're only a kid once and, and I think you and I say that's that's a bunch of bull and we don't need to do that to our kids. We're setting them up for failure. But anyway, I digress. We'll, we'll talk about that next time. Um, to, yeah, a little bit. You mentioned on artificial sweeteners. Um, a lot of people, when they go low carb and they're making the transition, I do allow for them to transition off and, and to to uh, to utilize an artificial sweetener with the goal of really, you know, encouragement for let's really eliminate that need for sweet. Uh, yeah. Because I, I, don't you agree that artificial sweeteners kind of are a, a self sabotage, setting us up for failure? I think it's a it's a crutch because yeah. if someone has a lot of sugar and we want them to go to no sugar, it's like big gap. So somehow we have to fill up the gap so we come from this much to, to where we want to be. Right. Uh, but I do agree. I mean, and it's a lot of um, even con controversy around, the, you know, how artificial sweeteners affect obesity, abdominal obesity, how they affect the gut flora. Right. Um, but we know that in terms of taste buds, they stimulate. And we know that that when these taste buds are stimulated for sweet, they communicate with the brain. The brain registers that sugar comes in, so it, it triggers the pancreas to produce insulin. So if we already have insulin resistance, we don't want to make our pancreas to have to produce more insulin, despite the fact that we don't even eat carbohydrates, right? So... So there is, is one reason in why we would want to limit. Again, they are much sweeter even than sugar in terms of uh, sweet perception. So if you do use it, use less. And I always encourage like uh, tapering down. Yeah. Um, if you are, if you know already you eat, I don't know, you add to your coffee or tea, 10 teaspoons of sugar, okay, maybe you can taper it down and make a goal every day you reduce by one teaspoon. So it's not going to be abrupt. Your taste buds will, will over time will get used to less and you will enjoy that same thing with less sugar or no sugar. Um, or substitute that for an artificial sweetener and see where you start and reduce even that to the point of eliminating. Mm -hmm. uh, that's if you add sugar. The, this, the, the other one is if you buy anything that comes in a package or a box, um, avoid those that have added sugar or artificial sweeteners. Now, here we can mention stevia, which is not an artificial sweetener. However, it's a non-caloric sweetener. And there is a book, I forgot the name of this book, that talks about the, the deceptive power of stevia or something like that where basically researchers looked at the effect of stevia and artificial sweeteners. It's kind of the same thing because it's a non-caloric sweetener. So it triggers the body in the same way um, aspartame would do. Of course, it's not the same uh, with regards to, to insulin response. It's not this metabolized the same uh, aspartame we know it, it has so many like right. neurotoxin and liver toxin and all that uh, probably we can't say that about stevia um, so i guess from all the non-caloric sweeteners if one would be to choose stevia would be uh, uh, an okay option if possibly if we can find the non-refined one the green powder because stevia it's a plant so think of of taking the plant and and having the least refined form I think the, the complaints with stevias are mostly related to the bitter aftertaste. 
So if if you use Stevia, you would have to try several brands before you find one that you find, you know, it it, it fits your <laughs> taste buds. Um, then uh, another one here is the erythriol from the sugar alcohols. Yes. So sugar alcohols are non, uh, not non-caloric. They do have calories about on average, maybe half of the carbohydrates, about two, one point to all the way to three, but on average, let's say two calories. So um, they are often used in the in the low carb community. Uh, sugar alcohols, by and large, they do cause gastric distress. Right. They they uh, change the osmolarity in the gut, so they make the the you pull more water from the blood into your colon, and that can lead to diarrhea. They cause gas, all sorts. Uh, out of all of them, looks like erythriol is the least um, has the least impact on the gut, <clears throat> so it's more tolerated. But the same goes for this as well. If you absolutely must use it, use it less often and in, in less quantity. Okay. I guess that's my, I don't know, do you have any other opinion on artificial sweeteners or non-caloric sweeteners? Well, I, again, it's, it's one of the, I don't, I guess I don't have a soft spot for them in particular because it's not generally my, 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 um, it's not what's difficult for me. And I think as practitioners, again, we, we want to be mindful, too, that that, you know, every everyone has a, a bit of struggle with with this transition away. And I think it's important for us to to be mindful of that, because it's very easy for me to say, well, don't be emotional, patient. Uh, don't crave things. You know, that, that's that's foolish yeah. for us to, to make those assessments and, and and those assumptions that someone has the same amount of willpower especially you and I who are in a fat adaptive state and so much easier. <laughs> it is. It's much easier. I think the encouragement comes is, you know, come to this, this side, come over here with me. It's terrific living and it's energetic living. And it's, uh, I would say it's, it's less emotional than, than it otherwise would be. And so I do want to be mindful of that. I mean, again, with the, <clears throat> but again, I do like goals and I do like endpoints and, I like the idea of I, you know, I'm not a person who who's going to tell a patient everything in moderation. That's not a, I don't think that's a wise philosophy because that's sort of a, a philosophy that applies to all, and we can't apply this to all. We have to apply it to the individual. So, I like the idea of of if you're on the sugar, switching over to that artificial. To, to at least reduce that that uh, that glycemic boost, that insulin spike, and then with the with the goal, the quick goal of getting off of this uh, this crutch, as you mentioned. So um, that that's my my you know really, and I, I like the tips though of if you're going to have a low carb treat. Um, and using those those sweeteners, artificial sweeteners, I think it's important to know which ones to choose. If we're, especially with the kids, and maybe that's a good a good segue to next next time's talk on. Okay, we want to we want to trick our kids here a little bit. What's what which is the best artificial sweetener to use? And, and we'll talk mm -hmm. about that. So, but yeah, let's talk about some craving takeaways. <laughs> so really really great today i think one of the things you mentioned early on is definitely you know ask yourself why when the cravings are happening um say why what time is it when did i last eat what's causing me to crave this or want this right now and i think uh, that that creates a, a bit of pause i think for people and i think that's a really really wonderful takeaway is why now uh, what's going on in my life? Um, why this? W yeah, why this particular thing that I'm wanting? Um, the other thing uh, I mentioned, fat loading. I like fat loading uh, to help with hunger, to uh, to break a fast. Um, yeah. I that's I, one one of the things I use personally. I use I use cream. I use you know uh, the bullet coffee um, cheeses so on and so forth. Uh, salt. 
enough salt. We want to make sure we have enough salt. And that's a great one. I think it's drinking a salty bone broth. I, I, I mentioned this to, to patients when they're at night, they've had dinner, they're craving something. I say, well, you know what? Pour yourself a, heat up a nice mug of, of bone broth, really give it some nice salt. And while you're looking, drink your bone broth and then tell me if you're still hungry. And I would say nine times out of 10, that hunger is going to be alleviated because it's going to be salty. And, and another fast. salt, Another salty drink is uh, if people buy ferment, lacto-fermented cucumber. Mm, okay. Uh, is a good one. Uh, that's another very, especially if you are working out and you sweat or you work outdoors and you sweat a lot here in Florida. Mm -hmm. you, um, bone broth is one. And that one is the brine from lacto-fermented cucumbers. And the brand that I recommend is Bubby's. It's B U B B I. B -B -I -S, S, I think. Okay, let's, let's see. Do that. So, lacto fermented cucumber brine from Bubby's. Yes. Or right? sauerkraut, any, anything fermented. And it has double fault. You bring in beneficial microorganisms, which are so important for, for gut health and overall health, as well as um, the salt, the sodium. Yeah. Uh, potassium, magnesium, micronutrients, those are all very important to be covered, the basis, because the kidney function changes to adapt to the low carbs. So it's like we have to keep that fine balance. So make sure you, and, and that, that's why the, the bone broth is good because it's rich in minerals, potassium and magnesium, yeah, that's uh, reaching out the bones. And if supplements need to be taken, um, they they need to be taken for that reason, like a magnesium or potassium salt, yeah. for example. Well, that's and that's uh, the uh, exogenous salts. We can mention those again for those yes. that can tolerate them because they're not the most flavorful. Um, I found them very sweet though for me. Really, for being off sugar so much. Um, I I oh for well, I had to dilute it a lot and I added extra cacao to make it bitter yeah. I, but uh they do they do work in terms of uh, so because you you get this exogen source of energy for the brain yeah. that also has this appetite suppressant effect sure. and especially if you want to work out on a fasted state then i say drink the salts before because you're not going to have that fatigue that you don't you normally have if you don't you're not adapted to fat burning right. and yeah. then Afterwards, maybe you have a, a, a little bit of protein and some greens if you want to, just for, for muscle buildup, uh, or just stay in the fasting state if, if you feel like you need to lose, burn more fat. So you burn your own fat afterwards for the recovery uh, post-exercise. Well, that, that's a, and a great, again, exercise, like you put there, yeah. helps well, with training. Think about, it's exercise takes you out of the kitchen, which is great. Uh, generally, you get your heart pumping. You you um, you're you're definitely in the you activate the you're not in the rest digest state. You're in the active state. Your 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 body is is pumped, ready to go, and it really quells appetite. I know a lot of people uh, post exercise they don't feel incredibly hungry. I know I don't. Um, but if you're not an exerciser and you don't want to go to the gym, get out of the house, go for a walk. Uh, and, and, you know, come back and, and, and then see how you feel. And a lot of times, you know, we're with hunger, especially we, we have to, um, get through the, the hunger wave, uh, hunger does come in waves due to the hunger hormone. And, and so we do have to be mindful of that as well. So that's great. And then Actually, let me see if I had any, a great tip. and then I like that you brought it up. <laughs> and then we definitely want to eliminate artificial sweeteners. Those are, can be a huge driver of cravings, especially that sweet craving. And I think what's important when you eliminate or if you can eliminate that sweet craving really forever, then you can really concentrate on the cravings that your body is telling you, whether it's maybe some more iron and craving a piece of meat um, or the salt. If you're post-exercise and you're craving salt and um, or, or some other micronutrient or another sort of strange craving, even fermented foods. Mm -hmm. I think when you eliminate that sweet craving from your life or as best as you can, you can then concentrate on those good cravings that uh, we do need to listen to because 
low carb, high fat is about mindfulness and listening to your body. So um, uh, those are our tips here, everybody. And I just want to add one more thing. Sure. Like how the, because we, in, on the context of low, high fat, low carb, um, how, how would this help? Just because when you eliminate carbohydrates and you make your body's main primarily source of energy fat, you're going to have a longer term energy source. So you will have more energy and you will have less hunger. So cravings just go away. Like you, yeah. you fine tune, you, you, your mind and body almost kind of get back in sync. Of course, you're still going to have stress and emotions in your life, sure. but sure. you will deal better with those and food would be in parallel to that. It's not going to intertwine with your emotions as much. But for this to happen, you really have to be patient and, and get into the state where you become a fat burner. So allow yourself to lower and lower and lower more and more your carb intake and bring higher and higher your fat intake all the way to the point where one day you will have no food cravings. Right. I, I really, really mean what I say. And I used this example before. I want to say it again. You will reach a day when you go out for a dinner or you'll be in a party and people would eat around you all the foods that one day you craved and you thought you couldn't live without them and they would not mean to you more than the napkins that are on the table. You would want to eat them as much as you care to eat the, the napkins. The napkins are probably more healthy, I would say, at least <laughs> fiber. So I think you're absolutely right. And I'm serious. It's like that. You reach a point where you really only eat when you're hungry and what's good for you and you, you're not out of control. Food doesn't, doesn't hold your, your thoughts anymore and you don't have a feeling of missing and deprivation and willpower needed to be used and all that. It's really a great place to be in. No, oh, I agree. I agree. So we encourage everyone, come, come with us, come to this side of, 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 uh, the the menu. Uh, it's a truly great place to be. So well, thank you for everybody for being with us this week. And I think we have our topic for next week. We're going to talk about the kids. And yes, I am looking for pointers. And um, so hopefully we'll have a lot of listeners, uh, viewers chiming in and giving their tips as well in the comments section. Yes, really And even for today. If you yeah, listen to the replay and if you have any tips for us uh, or for the other listeners, make sure you post your comments here. And uh, if you didn't get the free chapter of my book, it's available for download right now. So I will come back and add a, a link to that one as well. And that's Make Peace With Fat. Make, yeah, Make Peace With Fat. I'm, I'm offering a first chapter uh, for free. And that will give you a taste of what the book is all about. And then if it's for you, you can buy it. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.